we will start uh, today with a more formal study of what uh, of the examples that we had uh, shown so far. So, the examples we had uh, discussed were, uh, were both dynamic games, but we had never formally written out what a dynamic game is. So, what I will do today is, is tell you exactly that. Okay. So, a dynamic game is basically described using what can be what is called an extensive form. Okay. And here is an example of an extensive form. So, here player 1 is the one who plays first, he starts at this at this node, he has two actions L1 and R1. Then player 2, if player 1 plays L1, then player 2 then it is turn for player 2 to play and he has let us say 3 actions L2, M2 and R2 and uh, if, he pl if player 1 plays R1 then player 2 again has 3 actions L2, M2 and R2 and the this is a 0 sum game so player and so the payoffs are written like this 0. Uh, 0, 3 and 1, 3 and 0 and 6, 2 and 7. Okay. So, what this means is that if uh, if player 1 plays L1 and then player 2 plays L2, then player 1 will get 1. Okay. Player 1 will get minus 1 and player 2 will get 1. So, uh, player 1 is looking to get the least possible number here The and player 2 is trying to get the maximum possible number. Okay. Uh, so, whatever is the number here, player 1 is looking to minimize it. So, you can think of it this way that player 1 gets 1, player 2 gets minus 1. Okay. So, the player 1 is the minimizing player and player 2 is the maximizing player. This is, this is a zero sum game in which player 2 can observe exactly what player 1 has played all right now the this is this way of describing the game is called an extensive form so a tree like this in which you uh, demarcate what the actions of the players are and what uh, whose turn it is to play i have not yet mentioned what players know at each stage but that we will come to uh, in this case just let's take it for uh, let's for simplicity take we are taking the case that player 2 knows what player 1 has played okay and then at the end of the tree, you write out the payoffs. In this case, the, this is a zero sum game. So, all I need to write out is this just one number. If this was a non zero sum game, then I would have to write a pair of numbers one for player one and player one for player two. All right. Now, this what this way this way of describing the game what it does is it actually tells you exactly what is happening during the gameplay. So, how the information is flowing during the gameplay. So, player one has played L, L1, then player two has seen it and he has options L, L2, M2, R2, etc. What you, the other, the earlier way where we, the way we were writing games earlier where we were writing them as a table, that is what is called a normal form. So, a normal form is one where you just list out the strategies for all the players and you ask and you, and you, uh, and you solve, uh, and you solve for the game from there. These, Every every extensive form can also be written as a normal form and vice versa. It is just that the extensive form tends to be more explicit in terms of the interactions that are happening during the gameplay. The normal form is this table, is the way we write this out as a table. So, I will I will explain that. So, let us list out the strategies for the two players. So, what are the strategies for player 1? So, player how many strategies for player 1? Two strategies for player 1 and the strategy is the first strategy is let us say to play is is to simply play L1 and the second strategy for player 1 is to play R1. So, here my notation is that the superscript will stand for the players ident index. This is the player and this here is will the subscript stands for the strategy number. Okay. So, to play L1 is to play the constant strategy L1 is player 1's first strategy. To play the constant strategy R1 is player uh, player 1's second strategy. Okay. How many strategies does player 2 have? Why 9? 
Yeah. So the player two strategy is now remember we are in a dynamic game. So player two can observe what player one has done. So he has to pick his action as a function of what player one has done. Right. So if player one has played L1, he he has to pick e, L2, M2 or R2 at L1. And then if player two has, player one has played R1, he plays L2, M2 or R2 at at this node. So so he has to effectively play a function which is a function of the action that player one has played. Right. So how many choices does he have at this node? He has three choices here. So he can take any either L2, M2 or R2 at this node. And he has three choices again at the at the second node, right? So every combi every combination here is a possible strategy for player two, right? So the player two has uh, has nine strategies, which is, and the reason it's nine is because it's three here times three here. Okay, so let's uh, list these out. So let's write out player two strategy one, and now this is a function of what player 2 knows and what he knows is is basically the action of player 1 ok. So, so player 2 let us write it as a function of the action of player 1 and so I am going to write u1 u1 here so little bit of a control theoretic notation here. So, so u1 is the action of player 1. Okay. So, gamma 2 of u1, gamma 2 1 of u1 could be something like this. For example, it could be that he plays L2 if u1 is L1, that means if player 1 has played L1, he responds with L2, and if player 1 has played R1, he responds with he responds with R2. Another strategy is let us say gamma 2 2. This strategy is to simply regardless of what uh, regardless of what player 1 has played, he simply plays L2. So, irrespective of what player 1 has played, he is going to play L2. So, he, he which means that at, at this node he plays L2 and at this node he again also he plays L2. Okay. Another strategy is is irrespective of what player 1 has played, he plays R2. And likewise, a third one is that regardless of what he player 1 has played, he plays M2. This is clear? Okay. So actually, let me write this in this correct order M2 R2. Okay. So, this will be the third one, this is the fourth one. How many more strategies? So I have listed out four. You said there are nine. Okay, can you? So let's uh, let's take one more. So this is the fifth strategy for player two. Yes. So in this case, yes, that is what it would be. It is a Cartesian product of of the action spaces. So that's actually the the one way of counting the number of strategies. Yeah. Yeah. Where, we, where are you asking? Here, here. Yeah, and the one thing that R2 is so that is one strategy. Yeah, this whole this function is one strategy. So I have to write this function, right? And it's a function of what? It's a function of what the player what player one has played. Okay. So if player one has played L1, the action for player two is L2 in this strategy. And if player one has played R1, the action of uh, L, uh, of player two is R two. This is one such strategy. Another strategy is to simp is regardless of what player one has played, you just play L two. Regardless of what player one has played, you play R two, and then likewise, regardless, you play M two. Okay. So you so these are the strategies for the players are functions. Okay. For the first player, they are always trivial functions uh, because uh, he has uh, he he doesn't have any information. So for the second player, it's a function of what he knows. In this case, he knows what player one has played. Okay. okay. So here's another here's another strategy. So 
if player 1 plays L1, then you respond with L2. If player 1 plays R1, then you respond with M2. Then player 2 responds with M2. Now, here is another one. R2, L2. Strategy number 7 is to play M2 if player 1 plays L1 and R2 if player 1 plays R1. Um, strategy number 8. Is uh, M2 R2 U1 equal to L1 and U1 equal to R. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Yeah, L2. And here's the last one, which is R2 M2. If uh, U1 equals L1 and U1 equals R1. Okay, so this, these here are my nine strategies for for player two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So, like we did in the uh, in the uh, in uh, the last class, what we can do is. We can now write out this game as if it is a game between two players. Player one has two strategies. Player two has nine strategies, right? And right, and just express this whole thing as a table and ask, okay, what is what is the uh, what are the payoffs that the players are getting? So that that way of expressing a game is what is called a normal form game. So we could write out a table like this. This is player 1. Player 1 has two strategies. Let me just write them as L1 and R1. Those are his strategies. Player 2 has nine strategies. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Now, can someone help me fill out the the uh, what what are the going what are going to be the payoffs? So, player one, if player one plays L one for and player two responds with gamma two one, okay. The first strategy gamma two one here. Hmm? So, I'll, here I get one. Let's stick to L one for player one. Let's go horizontally, okay. So. Player 2 responds with 2. Hmm? Okay, fine. Where is it? So, what is 0? So, player 1 plays L. Player 2 plays 1. Okay, so that will be then. No, I think it's by easier to go horizontally. Okay, so let's let's stick to L1 for so then you can go branch wise, sticking to this branch. So uh, so let's stick to L1 first for player one and player two is playing now the his second strategy, which is gamma two two, which means he's going to respond with L2. What what does he get? One. Then now gamma uh, gamma two three, which means he's responding with M two three. Okay, gamma two four zero. Very good. Gamma two five one again. Gamma two six. Gamma two seven three. Gamma two eight three again. Very good. And gamma 2 9 will be 0. Okay. Next row. 
7, then, then 6, then 2, 7, 2, 6, 7, right? Yeah. Then 6, and then 2. Is this right? Okay. All right. So, this, as I said, is what is called a normal form of the gear. So, you take a normal form like this, this is a way, uh, this game could have been can uh, the normal form has the problem that or has the uh, has the uh, you can say uh, the shortcoming that it it actually conceals from you what is the happening within the game right during the gameplay you just know that play, the players have these many strategies and these are the pairs we do not know what is the interaction that is happening during gameplay like player 1 has we just know player 1 has two strategies l1 and r1 player th uh, player 2 has these nine strategies the fact that player 2 is responding to player 1 and and that he has such an information is actually not revealed through the normal form whereas the extensive form makes this whole thing very explicit the only uh, the but the the while this ma it makes things very explicit the extensive form has is a little uh, 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 ha, if you wanted to solve it directly from without writing the normal form then you would need to develop your own set of techniques okay because you would need you need a fresh set of techniques because we've never, really never solved this directly the other problem that happens with the extensive form and this you have seen yourself that one tends to sort of it, there is a possibility of making mistakes in uh, in the sense that you can because you know you know that player one has this information you tend to often think that well player uh, player one is going to act as if he is responding in each case giving a best response to player uh, for every for every action that player one uh, sorry because player two has this information he plays as if he is going to respond with the best response to every action that player one plays and what we saw was that actually hides a few some set of equilibria for me so if you want to actually ex find all the equilibria of the game the best the, the most sort of sure shot way of doing that is to convert a, an extensive form eventually to a normal form and then find find all the equilibria the extensive form gives rise gives you uh, gives you very explicitly what's going on inside the game but you know we, it it is limited in the sense that it doesn't let you explore other, uh, all the equilibria very prop, you know in a very systematic way now i'll explain how this uh, you know what exactly all happens here but we are under the assumption that the both players choose their strategies before the game that is always the assumption yeah yeah so anyway let's let's try to solve for this can you tell me what would be so now this is a zero sum game so if, if we are effectively then looking for a straddle point so can you tell me what is the saddle point for this? Player 1 wants to minimize, player 2 wants to maximize. L1, L1, L1 and 7. Yeah, so this is this is a saddle point. Why? Clearly, player 1 does not want to, if player 2 is playing 7, player 1 does not want to shift from L1. And player uh, one is playing L one. Player player two is for player two. It's optimal to play seven. So this is a saddle point for sure. No, no, no. That's exactly what I said. See, these are now these strategies are being chosen simultaneously, and the strategies are that these are the strategies. These are the nine strategies for player two. These are the nine strategies for player one. Uh, sorry, to two strategies for player one. These are being chosen simultaneously. The actions are being play, chosen in sequence. Okay, so we can look for a saddle point now in this, in the space of strategies. Consider knowing that the strategies are being chosen before the start of the game, although actions will be chosen during gameplay. Okay, so L one comma eight is also a saddle point. So these two are saddle points, 
and because these are saddle points you will see you will have the usual property that they would they would all have the same value okay so the uh, uh, the both saddle both of them are have to have the same value there are three now let's try to understand in some way what this uh, let us see if we can sorry you can you can that is and I, I explained that last time see the reason we are looking for a Nash equilibrium or a saddle point in this in uh, for this game here is because it is effectively now a simultaneous move game but at the level of the strategies although the actions are being uh, are being chosen dynamically the strategies are being chosen before the start of the, uh, of the game as a whole okay so therefore we are we we, we can so in this space we are if it's effectively any other any other simultaneous move game right where these uh, where, so long as we uh, interpret the space of strategies correctly the the all the other theory continues to apply okay so the point is that the strategies are being chosen knowing that there is going to be you know information that is going to come along and that is why the space of strategies and so on is has been enlarged to allow for all of them okay okay let's so this is so this is just an example of how to convert this uh, uh, this into a normal form let me let's do one more example and uh, this will be a, now what I, I this this is some more interesting so suppose you have now player one who can who has three actions okay l1 m1 r1 player 2 then has let's say two actions l2 and l2 r2 at every node okay again this is also zero sum 3 1 minus 1 1 2 0 and now here is the important thing player 2 here so the nodes where player 2 act but player 2 can now observe whether player 1 has played r1 or has not played r1 when he has not played r1 he cannot distinguish between whether player 1 has played l1 or m1 so what player 2 can tell is if either l1 or m1 has been played by player 1 or r1 has been played Okay, but not whether L1 specifically or M1 specifically has been played. Okay. So, the way we depict this in an extensive form is that we put these two nodes in one bubble like this or one box like this. Now, what does this mean? What this means is see when player 1 plays L1, the game would reach this node if player 1 plays m1 the game would reach this node at either node it is the turn of player 2 to play but what player 2 doesn't know is whether he is at this node or he is at this node okay so he can only know that it is his turn to play because it is one of these two but doesn't know which now the payoff that that he that would get realized is realized at the end here so after he plays the action after the fact he will know okay all right well if he suppose he plays l2 if he plays l2 and uh, he gets a payoff of 3 then he will know after the fact that player 1 had played l1 right or if he play, uh, if he gets minus 1 then he would know that player 1 had played m1 but at this node he does not know which of the two has actually uh, actually happened Okay, so this is you can think of any game of cards or and so on where such uh, you know where some information is hidden. This is exactly how these things play out, right? So this is this is a case in which a, the player two we say has imperfect information. So imperfect information means is is referring to the situation where player two is ignorant about something uh, that would happen during gameplay. 
the game is known to him but he or he knows that there are certain elements of the game during gameplay which will be not accessible to him okay all right so so now can you tell me what are the strategies for the two players firstly let's count how many strategies how many strategies for player 1 3 for player 1 okay how many strategies for player 2 4 why 4 Yeah, so the point is strategies are not mapping from nodes to actions, okay, they are mapping from information to action. The information at these two nodes, these two nodes here is the same for the player. He has the same information, he has no way of distinguishing between these two, okay. He has a way of distinguishing after the fact, after the game is over, but by that time it is too late, okay. So at the time of choosing his action, he does not have a way of distinguishing be between these two. So, he is therefore compelled to play the same strategy regardless of which node he is at, whether he is at L, whether he is at this node or uh, whether he is at this node or he is at this node, the action that he would end up having to play is the same, okay. So, he is compelled to play the same action essentially without the knowledge of which node he is in in this bubble, right. So, consequently, we have to, in our definition of a strategy, we have to take into account that the same action is being chosen at these two. And that is equivalent to saying essentially that we have collapsed these two to, to, one, to one unit, right. The strategy of a player is a mapping from its information to its actions, okay. And the information here being is simply that L1 or M1 has, has been played, okay. Here the information is that R1 has been played, it is clear, okay. So let us quickly write out the three strategies for player 1, first L1, M1, R1 and there are four strategies for, uh, for player 2 and those are so now you know it starts getting a little tedious to start writing this because you have to represent his information. See earlier the information was equal to the action, okay. Earlier player's information was equal to the action of player 1. So he knew exactly what player 1 had played. Now if I want to write something like this, I have to write okay, if player 1 has played L1 or M1, okay. Uh -huh. So you have to, so the point is you have to find a way of representing it. Information can be represented in multiple equivalent ways, okay. So you can represent this, for example, you can simply say that either let us call this for example node x, this box we will call it x and here it is y, okay. So at x, so gamma 1 is so this at x, uh, so he at x he it plays L2, so at x and at y, at y he plays M, uh, sorry R2, sorry R2 for example. Another possibility is that he plays um, R2 at x and L2 at y. And then there are the other strategies where he always plays L2 or always plays R2 regardless of where uh, whether he is at X or Y, clear? Hmm? So now once again I can create a, a table, a, a normal form like this from uh, for this game. This is again a zero sum game. So tell me what are the 
uh, what should I fill in? So, if player 1 plays L1, player 2 follows it up and player 2 plays gamma 2 1. Yeah. So, let us write out the payoffs properly. So, player 1 plays L1 and then player 2 is going to play gamma 2 1, which means that at in this in this set x, he is going to play L2, okay, regardless of which node he is at. Okay, so, he's so, which means that if player 1 has played L1, then this guy is going to uh, get to node x and he is going to then respond with L2, right. So, you get then what do I need to put here? 3, okay. Then player 1, no, 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 no. So, this is you need to be clear about this. See, player 1 has played L1. Player 1 has played L1, but player 2 does not know that. Player 1 has played L1, the game uh, has reached this node, but player 2 does not know that the game has reached this node. He is just pl playing L2 without that knowledge, right. He is going to play L2 even at if the game had reached this node, okay, in this, in this strategy gamma 2 1, okay. So, player 2 plays L2 then the uh, game reaches this node this leaf node and the uh, the then the payoff is 3 okay let's do for gamma 2 2 l1 followed by gamma 2 2 gamma 2 2 is which means that at node x he is going to play r2 at at x whatever this bubble x he is going to play r2 so the sequence of actions then is l1 followed by r2 and that gets you to 1 Okay, then L1 followed by uh, L1 and then gamma 2, 3, which means again L1 followed by L2, that again gives you 3, L1 followed by um, uh, gamma 2, 4, which is again L1 followed by R2 and that is 1. Okay. Now, now tell me for M1, minus 1, minus 1, see the thing, so player, player 1 is playing M1 player 2 is still playing L2 here, okay, the game you get to minus 1, okay. Player 1 plays uh, M1, player 2 plays gamma 2, 2, that means he is going to play R2 at X, then it is going to be 1, then again L2 here, which means he is going to get minus 1 here and then there is a 1, correct, okay. Now, player 1 plays R1. So, then I need to look at what player 2 is going to do at y. Hmm? At y, he is going to play, he is he's, he's playing R2, so it is 0. In this, he is going to play L2 at y, so that gives him 2. In gamma 2, 3, he is going to play L2 throughout, so that again gives him 2. And gamma 2, 4, he is going to play R2 throughout, so that gives him 0. Okay. So, now tell me what is the saddle point here? Player 1 must play M1, okay, and okay, so this is and follow and what is player 2 playing? No, no, there is no R2, you have gamma what? Gamma 2, 2, okay, so that means let me see, let us check this. So, if player player 2 is playing gamma 2 2 then player 1 wants to play m1 okay if player 1 is playing m1 then player 2 can play gamma 2 2 yeah that's okay so this is this is one saddle point any other any other saddle point no let's check uh, let's be clear, uh, sure yeah there is no other saddle point. This is the only saddle point. So, what we can see here, so it, firstly there is no, uh, there is no other saddle point. The other is, the, there is an interesting, uh, there is actually something interesting about, we can think about this saddle point in a sort of interesting way. So, if you think about the game from the point of view of player 1, okay, player 1 has these 3 actions, L1, M1, R1. He also knows that player 2 cannot tell the difference between L1 and M1. He knows that player 2 will not know if he has played either M L1 or M1. So, in other words, if player 1 plays either L1 or M1, player 2 will not know which of those has been played. But he, if he plays R1, he knows that it will, uh, he knows that player 2 will know that R1 has been played. 
is this clear ok. So, the choice for player 1 in some sense is the following. The choice is he has to say well should I play R1 and then player 1 and then player 2 will know that I have played R1 and then he will respond to that or should I not disclose or what I have played by playing either L1 or M1. So, if he is going to play either L1 or M1, then for then this part of the tree, this part of the tree is effectively for in that sub game what is called a sub game I will make all these things more formal, but just look at this, this part of the tree for the two players is effectively like a simultaneous move game because player 1 has not revealed what action he has taken, player 2 has not seen the action ok, player 2 cannot see the action that player 1 has taken and so therefore for that sub game is no different from a simultaneous move game. So, the choice for player 1 is effectively should I engage with player 1 in by playing R1 and revealing in which case he would know that I have played R1 or should I engage with him in this simultaneous move game right. So, effectively that has that is the sort of choice that is that is uh, that is the strategic choice. So, should so there are and there could be pluses and minuses in both of this here there is disclosure and therefore player player 2 will replay in a certain way here 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 uh, but uh, but the payoffs could be different in both cases there could, here there the player player 2 does not know uh, know what player 1 has played. So, therefore, he could play in a different way ok. So, if you just looked at this particular sub matrix uh, the the sub game formed from this ok from just this part of the tree from just this part of the tree. That is effectively just a simultaneous move uh, simultaneous move game. So, we can I will just write that sub matrix here. In this in that sub matrix player 1 has 2 actions L 1 or M 1, player 2 has 2 actions L 2 or R 2 right. And what are the payoffs? L 1 followed by L 2 gives you 3, L 1 followed by R 2 gives you 1, L M 1 followed by L 2 gives you minus 1 and L 1 this is 1 ok. So, this is player 2, this is player 1. Now, in this game can, uh, is there a saddle point in this game right. So, the saddle point is M 1 comma R 2 this is the saddle point. So, what effect what has effectively happened is that well you can say well player 1 can now say that well if I get into this sub game here then effectively what I have to do be doing in this game is to play L M 1 and then player 1 player 2 would then be responding with with R 2 or I can say I just do not get into this sub game at all and instead play R 1 and then player 2 will respond will come to know and then he will respond with whatever. Ok, he would respond with what here? In this case, uh, I do not know, we will have to check whatever it is. Yeah, so player 2 will, yeah, player 2 will respond with L2. Ok, so if player 1 gets into this, this simultaneous move game, and so engages player 2 in a simultaneous move game here, then the rational outcome of that is that player 1 will, is for player 1 to play M1 and player 2 to play R2, and then they would, uh, player, player 1 would get 1. Okay. If player 1 in gets into this into this uh, game where player 2 is going to observe what he has played, then player 2 is going to respond with L 2 and then he is going to get 2. So, effectively then player 1 has the choice of either playing this simultaneous move game or playing this dynamic game or this you know this game where where player 2 can see what player 1 has done. In this game he is going to get 1 in this game he is going to get 2 and effectively what uh, therefore, what he is doing is well he is choosing that 1 is better than 2 for player 1 he is a minimizing player. So, he is therefore, he, he decides to go with this. You can interpret the solution of this game in this sort of way that essentially that is what has happened is the player 1 has basically broken down this this game into these sub games and then try to uh, say well 
let me analyze this one separately or this one separately and let us say what where should I be concentrating effectively right. So, this is this is uh, so it turns out that we can actually do this sort of analysis for several games provided they are they have this kind of decomposability structure ok. The only thing that you do miss out on is the is the possible is possibilities that 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 various sub games could inter get interlinked. For example, it is possible for player 2 to say well it, now it does not happen in this particular game, but it is possible for player 2 to do the following. So, it is possible that player 2 says I ignore this information about x and y and regardless of what has been played by player 1, I am going to commit to playing either L2 or R2 throughout. Now, what that does is it interlinks the two parts of the tree. So, then you cannot reason about that game you know sub tree wise ok. But in many cases as I said one of the ways of finding uh, or finding a solution can be done by doing this kind of a decomposition ok alright. So, alright. Ah, so, the normal form does not reveal anything like that right the normal form this could have been an, the normal form of a of a of a static game as well. It says nothing in terms of the, the line of analysis as I see it is that you have a tree, hmm. then you get rid of the combinatorial reasoning required by using the normal form. So, so the normal form is is a way of finding all solutions. Right. So suppose it's a matrix, right? Right. Now you take the red sub part, hmm. it should mean something as a sub matrix. It does you can it does mean something. So, you can look at uh, look at some part of it like for example, this I think is the is that here ok, but you have to be careful it you need to be able to number your strategies appropriately for you to get a clean sub matrix and so on out of it. Otherwise, you know they could be jumbled up it really depends on how you have enumerated the strategies with this now I can define for you what an extensive form actually is. Okay. 